You can download the arts in the video for free. Link in the description. We will first create the scene that will detect if the player is on a conveyor belt or not. Create a new scene with an area 2D node as the core. Right click, rename, rename it to conveyor area 2D. Then go to scene, scene save as, and save it. Then select the area 2D node and add a script. Inside the script, we will first establish the class name as conveyor area 2D. Doing this will put this node inside of Godot's add node window, allowing you to treat and add this node like any other built in node in Godot. And the name you write here is the name that you will search for. We will then export a variable called horizontal speed. Export will make this variable editable from the right, allowing us to provide different amounts of speed between different copies of this node and horizontal speed will not only provide the speed but also the direction of the conveyor belt we will then define two more variables objects array will store all the nodes or objects that are on this conveyor belt and object speed will store whether we are providing speed to that node or not as we must track this to ensure that we only apply speed when the node or object is on the conveyor belt and not in the air we will then create two custom functions one for when an object enters this area 2d and one for when an object exits then inside the built-in ready function we will connect the body entered and body exited signals to the two functions that we just created the reason why we do this is instead of manually connecting these signals is because we are adding this node to the add node window. Any manually edited property or manually connected signal of this node will be reset when adding this scene via the Godot add node window, which is why we must connect these signals to custom functions inside the code. Then inside the object entered function, we will use the built-in variable called object, which will equal the node entering this area. Then we will check if a variable exists inside of the colliding object, which we will add this variable later inside the player script. And also if you want any other character body or rigid body node to interact with this conveyor belt, then all you need to do is add this variable to that node through a script. Then after we have found this variable, we will add this node to the object's array, and we will also add a value of 0, 0.0 to the object's speed array, which append will add the value to the end of the array. Then to provide horizontal speed to the object's conveyor velocity, inside the built-in physics process function, we will iterate through the size of the object's array, with the made-up variable i representing the entry that we are up to. Then we will check if the object is on the floor, and that they are not at the horizontal speed. Then we will increase their speed, and update it inside the object speed array. And we will also check if they are not on the floor, and are still being moved by the conveyor belt. Then we decrease their speed, and update the object speed array. Then inside the object exited function, we will again check for the conveyor velocity variable. And if the object array has this object, then we create a temporary variable that grabs the position of where the object is inside of the object's array. Then we check if the speed of the object is not equal to zero. Then we remove the horizontal speed from the object to make it equal to zero. Then we remove the entry of the object from both the object's array and object speed array. Then to improve performance, as we don't want to run the physics process function when the player is nowhere near this conveyor belt, inside the built-in ready function, we will disable the physics process function. Then inside the object entered function, if the object's array is not empty, then we will enable the physics process function. And inside of the object exited function, if the object's array is empty, then we will disable the physics process function. Now to make the player compatible with this conveyor belt system, go to your player script. Inside, we will create a variable called conveyor velocity, which will hold all the extra velocity to be added when the player is colliding with the conveyor area 2D. Then inside the player's physics process function, after all the physics logic for the player's movement, and just before the move and slide function call, we will simply add conveyor velocity to the velocity variable. Now an example of using this conveyor belt system is to go to a level that you want to add a conveyor belt to. First, we have the sprite with an animation player. This is to represent the visuals of the conveyor belt, although feel free to use any other node or method for the visuals, such as a tile map player tile or an animated sprite. Additionally, because I'm using a sprite, I need to have a static body node with a collision shape to provide the collision of the conveyor belt so the player doesn't just walk through the conveyor belt sprite. Although, in the case you're using a tile map player, you can just add collision like you do with any other tile. Then, once you have the visuals and the collision done, press the plus, type conveyor area 2D. Keep in mind that this is the name of the class name that we established earlier in the script. Then, press create. Then while this area 2D is selected, you will need to add a collision shape 2D node as a child. For my collider, I will use a rectangle 2D with a size of 24 by 12. Although feel free to use any type of collider or size of collider that you would like. And keep in mind that this collider is what the player will have to enter to receive any of the conveyor velocity. And finally, you can then set the horizontal speed of the conveyor belt. Keep in mind though that this controls the direction that the player will move as well, and also how fast the conveyor belt is. Now you have a simple conveyor belt system that you can add to any of your 2D platformer games inside of Godot. And don't forget that you can check out the project files in the description.